أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I hope you all are doing well and uh, welcome for the, to the first episode of our Tafsir of Dua Kumil podcast um, This is a new podcast by Mizan Institute uh, as you know, if you've heard of the uh, previous podcast, we've done some other topics as well. We've done the topic of tafsir on a couple of surahs, and also some of our other instructors have been doing podcasts as well that you can look up on different uh, podcast platforms. This, however, is a new uh, podcast that we're starting that has to do with the tafsir of Dua Kumail. Um so I'm going to uh, just give a brief overview of how we're going to go about things uh, just so you understand uh, the way that we are going to be discussing things in this podcast. And then from there, inshallah, we'll dive uh, right into the content. For those who are new to hearing from Mizan Institute, you can go on Facebook and you can follow our page uh, and get updates on the different type of work that is being done under Mizan Institute. There's classes, there's courses, uh, podcasts, uh, and other services that are provided on the website. Um, and you'll see those uh, basically updates coming up on your Facebook if you follow the page. Also, if you're on Instagram, then you can also um, add our page on Instagram as well. And again, be notified of the work that is being done. If anyone wants to host a course, uh, they can go to MizanInstitute.org and uh, there will be a tab there where they can host one of the different courses that Mizan Institute has uh, prepared. About this uh, podcast, uh, inshallah, what we're going to do is the first two sessions, we'll be discussing some introductory uh, points and introductory topics just to get us into the context of Dua Kumail. And then after that, we'll actually delve into the du'a itself. Um, one point that I do need to mention is that when we are going to start going through the du'a, um, you will realize and notice that we won't be spending uh, too much time on too much time on every single line. Some lines we will spend more time on, and some lines we will just go ahead through the uh, the translation. And we'll move on from it. So it just depends because some lines will have our, have certain concepts referring to them. And then some lines you'll find that there's multiple lines talking about the, the same concept in different ways. So it, it will make a difference in terms of how we uh, approach each phrase. Just be aware that we're not going to be spending the same amount of time on uh, every phrase in this du'a. So for the first session, uh, or the first episode, I should say, um, what we're going to discuss, and this is, of course, a very important uh, discussion to have, is the different reasons why we do du'a. What is the purpose behind supplication? Um, because the defining the purpose behind supplication is going to play an important role uh, in terms of how we are going to approach the concept of du'a and the you know the idea of of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, when we say dua, we're referring to, normally, we're referring to uh, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside of the format and the shape and form of salat or the daily prayers that we have. So if you went to different people and you asked them, if you asked the average um, Muslim or Shia and you asked them why they do dua, what is the reason and the purpose for them to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will get different responses. And I have put down just about four different responses that you will get from people. And these are very common responses. Now, before we start going through these reasons, um, I want to just make a disclaimer here that none of these are actually wrong. The question that we are asking is, what is the most important reason why we do du'a? Um, why do we do du'a that can have multiple answers, right? So, but we're trying to look for the for the most important, right? What's that fundamental reason why we uh, do du'a, why we read du'a kumil, du'a joshan kabir, all these different du'as that we have, or even the ta'ghibat after our prayer, right? What's the main reason why we perform these uh, du'as and recite them? 
So if you went to the average person and you asked them about this, the first response that you will get normally is that it has thawab or it has a reward associated with it. And like I said, none of these answers are wrong. So this answer also is completely correct. Every single one of these du'as that we recite, uh, you know, whether we know it or we don't know it, there is a reward associated with them. Um, at the end of the day, it's a means of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, there is definitely a reward associated with them. Um, and in fact, sometimes the reward that's associated with them is a notable reward. You know, it's not the type of reward where you would just hear it and just walk by it. No, sometimes you re you read a hadith about some of these du'as and you find that the reward is actually sometimes, you know, a notable reward. Um, is this the fundamental reason why we do du'a? The answer would, to that would be no. And the reason for that is because there are so many other ways of attracting this thawab and this reward towards yourself, right? Like reciting Qur'an is one of them. When you look at the ahadith that we have when it comes to the thawab and the reward of reciting different surahs of the Qur'an, you will find that each one of these surahs, a lot of times, there are multiple rewards mentioned for them. The rewards sometimes are so big that uh, for a second it might make you doubt whether that is actually true or not, right? And then going outside the world of reciting things, doing other actions in Islam uh, can carry handsome rewards, um, and yet they may not even take as long as reciting a du'a kumil. Now it just depends on how long it takes you to recite a du'a kumil. Um, you know, some people, they will recite Dua Kumil in, you know, they'll have a Guinness World Record of seven minutes, eight minutes. Usually, if you want to go fast, it's going to take at least 20 minutes. And if you want to, you know, God forbid you're reciting with someone who goes super slow, then that person might take an hour, you know, 50 minutes to an hour. Um, but regardless of how long it actually takes for you to recite the Dua, it's going to take at least 20, 30 minutes. Whereas you can get that same reward in Thawab by doing another action that is very much simpler than that. For example, uh, the ahadith that we have about giving charity is really, it's really crazy actually, right? Um, and so, can't you just do that? How long would it take you for, for you to give charity? Five seconds, 10 seconds, right? It's not gonna take too long. So that is not the fundamental reason why we recite these du'as, right? The thawab and the reward is there, that is absolutely correct, but that's not the real answer we are uh, looking for. So having said that, let's move on to the second answer. The second answer that people will give you when you ask them why they recite these du'as is that they will tell you that when we recite these du'as, we're actually asking God for different things. There are different hajat, right? Hajat is the plural word of hajat. Hajat means something that you are in need of. Um, we have different hajat, different things that we're in need of. And when we recite these du'as, this is our way of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us those different things. Okay, so let's analyze this answer for, for a second. Um, is that true? Yes, absolutely. When it comes to du'a kumail, do we ask God for things? Of course, uh, we ask God for multiple things in du'a kumail. Like when we get to these lines later on in the du'a, and this is of course closer to the end of the du'a, he says, Allahumma wa man aradani bisu'in fa'arint. Oh Allah, whoever has evil intentions for me, then you get rid of those evil intentions. Wa man kaadani fa'kit. And whoever is plotting against me, you plot against the plotting of that individual. وَجَعَلْنِي مِنْ أَحْسَنَ عَبِيدِكَ نَصِيبًا عِنْدَكَ And make me one of those who is uh, amongst those who has received the most spiritual sustenance from you. وَأَقْرَبِهِمْ مَنْزِلَةً مِنْكَ And those who have the closest of statuses towards you, right? And this is just one of the du'as that we have in Du'a Kumil. We have other, other things that we ask for um, in this du'a. So this is true. This is one of the reasons why we do du'a. But... Is it the fundamental reason why we do du'a? The answer again is no. What's the reason for that? The reason for that is that if the whole point of du'a kumil, du'a joshan kabir, if the whole reason to uh, basically 
recite the dua was to ask things from God, whether they're, they're things that have to do with the hereafter or things that have to do with this world. That's not, that's not the point I'm making. Regardless of which world you're asking for, um, it still wouldn't take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes uh, to ask God for those things. If you summarized all the things that you ask for in Dua Kumail, like the actual requests that you ask for in Dua Kumail, maybe if you put all of them together and you really summarize it, maybe you could ask for them in two minutes, you know? Um, you ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive your sins. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hide your negative attributes, right? وَكُلَّ قَبِيحٍ asrarta, And, you know, different things. If you were to summarize all of these, you would find that it doesn't even take 20 minutes. Why is Imam Ali, and we will talk about the history and the context of Dua Kumail in particular uh, in the next episode, but why is he taking so long, uh, in my words, of course, to ask for these things? So that's part of the reason, again, it's not the fundamental reason. Now, bear with me, we go through th three and four, and then we'll give you the answer. Um, number three that you will find people uh, giving an answer to this idea of why we recite du'a, they will tell you, you know what, because when we recite this du'a, it's a form of repentance for us and our sins are forgiven, right? So like when I go through this du'a, I ask God to forgive my sins. So when I come out of this du'a kumail, I'm walking out of the masjid after reciting this du'a kumail, you know what? I am, you know, I'm purified. My sins have been forgiven. Again, a true answer makes sense. We don't have a problem with it. Is it the fundamental reason why? No. Okay. Now, in Dua Kumail, we have multiple times where Imam Ali asks for the forgiveness of his sins, right? And one of the famous ones is the one that, you know, it starts out, it says, Ilahi wa Sayyidi, fa'as'aluka bil qudrati allati qaddartaha. I ask you, by the power and the strength that you have, and by the situation that you have set up, that if someone does something wrong, they will be held accountable to it. I ask you that you forgive every crime of mine, every wrongdoing of mine, and he continues with that. So we definitely ask God for that. But again, is it the fundamental reason why? The answer is no. And the reason for that is because in the same dua of Kumail, you find the Imam asks in different ways the same thing. But if the real reason why you're asking, you're reciting this dua is for God to forgive your sins, well, you only have to ask once. Um, this is what we know from our hadith, that if someone really fundamentally and you know sincerely ask God to forgive his sins and he asks God once right and he really regrets what he did and he's making a decision not to return to those sins his sins are forgiven right or as the hadith says that this person is like a baby that's just born right this person is born again he's pure okay so you only have to ask once why are we asking multiple times the best example for this is dua joshan kabir Dua Joshan Kabir, uh, you find that a hundred times after every phrase, right? Dua Joshan Kabir, everyone knows it because, just because it's so long. Um, after, and this is part of the reason why it's so long. After every phrase, what do we do? We say the same thing. We ask God for the same thing. What is that same thing? Oh Allah, I need you to forgive my sins, right? Al Gauth, Al Gauth, Khalisna min al Nari, Ya Rabbi Allah. You free me and liberate me from the hellfire. Well, why are we asking God a hundred times? Won't he forgive us if we ask him 20 times or 10 times or one time? Yes, he will. So then we're still looking for the real reason, the fundamental reason why we recite these du'as. Moving on to number four. Number four says this. It says, you know, the reason why we recite these du'as fundamentally is because du'as are a way of us learning about different Islamic concepts and different Islamic beliefs beliefs. Again, this holds true. There's no doubt about that. Dua Kumail definitely holds Islamic concepts that we will be speaking about. And that is the exact reason why we're even doing tafsir of this dua anyways, right? But is this the fundamental reason? No, because if you wanted to summarize Dua Kumail and just speak of the concepts that are in there, right? Then again, it would be shorter than what it is right now. And yet you find it's as if Imam Ali, 
he wants to go on and on speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right. So I won't hold you guys any further than that. Let me just get to the fundamental reason why we recite these du'as. Now, again, before I mention the reason, I want to emphasize all four of these that we mentioned, there is truth to them. So they're definitely not wrong answers. They're just not the fundamental reason. The fundamental reason why we would recite these du'as is because when you are reciting these du'as, and the longer the better, is because you are building a connection with God by talking to Him and speaking to Him, right? So look at your relationships in this world, your friends, your spouse, your children. How do you build a relationship with these individuals? You spend time with them, right? And experts of parenting and and uh, psychologists, they, they talk about this idea quite often that one of the most important things any parent can do to build a relationship even with a child that's younger, even with a child that comes from a different generation, is to spend time with them, right? Because when you spend time with someone, you build a relationship, you build a connection. Imam Ali, in this dua and other duas, what the Ahlul Bayt are teaching us is that you have to spend as much time as possible with God. So yes, can you ask God for things in a shorter and briefer manner? Absolutely. And is it bad to do that? No. But the idea is that the more time you spend with him, the bigger of a connection and the stronger of a relationship you are going to build with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the fundamental reason why we do dua. This is the main reason why we do dua. And then you take that relationship and that connection that you have built and you start to live with that connection and that relationship. So what does that mean? That means when I recite Dua Kumail, then I've built this connection. When I've built this connection, this relationship, I move on in my life. When I come across haram, when I come across sins, then I look at those sins, I say, no, I can't do this. I have a relationship with this individual. And by this individual, I mean God, you know, with this entity, with this thing. I have a relationship with him. I can't just, you know, betray him like that, right? You come across a wajib in your life, something that's obligatory for you to do. You look at that wajib, you say, oh, I have a relationship. I was just speaking to this guy. <laughs> you know, in in, uh, in Farsi, you know, they have this uh, expression where they say that once your eyes meet with somebody, right, and you've been looking someone in the eye, in other words, you have a personal relationship with this individual, it becomes 10 times more difficult now to betray him. Right, So it's the same thing here. This is fundamentally the reason why our Imams, although the du'as contain all of those four things that we mentioned, it has a reward and it has a thawab. And you ask God for forgiveness. And you ask God for other hajat as well. Right? It's not just the things that, in, that we need in the hereafter. Right? Prophets ask God for things in this world. Right? As in the case of Prophet Zakaria. So, you ask God for things, or even number four, which is you learn things about Islam as you're going through this dua. All of these apply, but the fundamental reason is that you're trying to build a friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fundamentally, the way to do that is to spend time with Him. Us doing dua is us spending time and chilling with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, in a different way than we do with normal people, right? We chill, spend time, and, uh, and uh, you know, interact with different people in different ways. This is our way of spending time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once somebody does this, once somebody builds that strong relationship, that strong connection, then that strong relationship and that strong connection can push him even further than just the reward that he got out of reciting this dua. These rewards that we hear, you know, we hear here and there, Right about these du'as, these are just small incentives really to get us to do the du'a because most of us, including someone like myself, you know, we're ignorant when it comes to God, right? We don't understand the importance of spending time with God. So God has to sprinkle some incentives here and there, some rewards here and there because that's the only thing that's going to draw our attention, right? And not to belittle those rewards, those rewards are very handsome, but the real thing that comes out of du'a, the real thing that someone is supposed to get out of du'a is building that connection. So having understood that, I'm going to make one point, and this will affect the way you and I recite du'a very often. Because this is the main reason why 
we are reciting the dua, the thing that our scholars have mentioned over and over again is that, listen, if you're not feeling like reciting a dua for whatever reason, you might be tired, you might be worried about something, you might be have something on your mind, you just can't pay attention to the dua right now, then don't bother yourself too much to recite the dua. If a dua is very long, trust me, you don't have to go through the whole thing. I'll give you an example. Joshan Kabir, if you have to go through half of it, but the half that you're going through, you can really pay attention to, no worries, do half of it and really pay attention so that at least in half of it, you're building a connection. That's the fundamental reason why you were doing this to begin with, right? If you want to do Dora Kumail, right? There's no problem, do half of it, right? And But pay attention when you're doing half of it, right? If you want to do Dora Arafa, right? It's a really long Dora, no problem, do half of it, right? But really try to pay attention while you're doing it. If you set this as your main priority, the way we do these du'as will, inshallah, change in our centers, in our communities, even in our day-to-day uh, -day lives as well. So this is the fundamental reason why we do du'a. Inshallah, in the next episode, we're going to spend some more time discussing du'a kumil in particular, and especially what does the word du'a even mean? What is the difference between the word du'a, nida, munajat, and just speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What's the difference there? And then, what is the story behind this du'a? How did du'a kumail even come to be uh, fundamentally? How did it get to us, this du'a that we recite so often every, uh, every Thursday night? So, inshallah, we'll continue with the discussion in the next episode. Again, if you have not followed our Facebook page, it's just Mizan Institute on Facebook, you can do that. You can also subscribe to our Instagram, and also you can check out MizanInstitute.org if you're interested in hosting a course. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.